Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. This time we're going to talk about stabilizing an old box. Now you know I like to use Camacho boxes because they're thick and heavy and very durable. Uh, but I've had a demand for, uh, for example, this white owl box. I built one uh, recently uh, for an auction for a charity and I'll give you a link to it right up there right about now and you can watch how that was built. But when you've got a box like this and you start going to work on it, there's a lot of things to do to make it stable. I mean, if you move ahead and build something out of this, it's going to turn into some problems later if it starts to fall apart. So this episode is a couple of tricks. Number one, to take care of some of this nasty that's in here. I don't know what that is. We'll take care of that. We'll beef up the box. But most importantly, we're going to make sure that while we're building it, the outside finish gets stabilized and doesn't come off or crack. Um, hear that in the background? If you were to ask me what my favorite rock and roll album of all time is it is certainly Def Leppard high and dry. He's diving in an empty pool. I've been known to do that. This had um, Pete Willis on it as one of the guitarists along with Steve Clark. This was their best sound. I guess uh, Pete Willis and Mutt Lang had a few problems when it started to take it into the hysteria and a little bit more beboppy stuff. But if you want the best Def Leppard this is it, high and dry. Okay, so we'll enjoy that. Get a copy of this if you can. Um, the good thing about this episode is I'm going to let you in on a couple of products. Uh, one of them is new to me, uh, but kind of uh, they come in really handy when you're doing this. So let's hit the bench. All right, let's take a look what I got on the bench before I clean it off and get on the episode. Again, we've got this old white owl box. That's going to be... Uh, the focal point here. I have made the neck uh, cut the drop down in it. I've got my dowel holes drilled where the second board, the bottom board, uh, comes into it. Headstocks cut in, marked out. Look at 61 Highway. It's the only road. It's the longest road I know. Mississippi. Man, I love my logo. We're going to use a wood nut on this and a rosewood fingerboard. Um, this is going to an artist that's been a very talented guitarist, uh, does a lot of different work in a lot of different genres, and um, he's uh, pairing up with Cedric Burnside lately. So let me get this cleaned up and get on the episode. Okay guys, let's start here. These old boxes Inevitably, they've been in a garage or something like that, and you start looking in here and you see this stuff. Could be oil, could be some kind of stain. Uh, don't know, but I don't want to know. This isn't the kind of stuff you want to be breathing and, and that kind of thing. So the first thing we need to do is stabilize this. Now, some people might use bleach, some other kind of disinfectant, pine salt, or something like that. But I'm in the plant business and have been for a while, and... Uh, I use this stuff, they put the label on upside down, so I'm going to be um, careful with it. But it's Fisan 20. You can see it's a greenhouse disinfectant. Now, what I've used it for is you run across mold, like maybe what this is, some kind of spores. Um, uh, I work around palm trees, you might have figured that out. Um, in fact, if you Google me, you'll find some papers I've written about a certain kind of disease and palms that spread with pruning tools. And so disinf disinfecting your tools is a really important thing around some of the stuff I do in my uh, work. So this stuff here will disinfect things. So what I do is when you're using this kind of thing, I don't just use surgical gloves or something. I get a good pair of gloves like this. The stuff is pretty safe, but I still don't want it on my skin and stuff. You always want to read the material safety data sheet, MSDS sheet. It'll tell you about exposures and that kind of thing on any chemical you use. But you basically want to disinfect the box. Now, I'll put my gloves on, and then I'll take a small piece of sponge that I've cut from a larger piece with scissors. 
and I'll soak this up in the sponge and then I'll take it very lightly and go around and make sure that every surface of the box has been touched with my disinfectant and then I want to let that dry out and make sure that everything is stable there again I don't want to be breathing whatever this is of 60 or 80 years of the Pharaoh's tomb isn't that a cool graphic all right um, we've got in all the corners and on the sides here and this stuff is is uh, foaming up a little bit here so that's probably a good sign I'm kind of dabbing it I really don't want to knock that paper off uh, too much more but um, whatever that was in there we should be okay now we're gonna let that dry thoroughly and then go on to putting the stabilizer on the outside of the box okay once we get the inside of our box stabilized um, let's take a close look at this box here you can see that I've got paper coming off everywhere here I don't want to lose any of that um, next thing is I'm gonna to have to mark off for the pockets and stuff and I typically do that with this blue tape now if I put this blue tape on here to mark off things so I can find the center point where I want to put the pick up uh, and that kind of stuff I put this tape over this when I pull it off there's a good chance I'm gonna lose a bunch of that so I don't want to do that um, so what do I do well maybe we could lacquer or varnish the box that's not a good idea because when this stuff sets up it sets up hard um, and it becomes part of the wood so if I'm sawing or something I don't want this to be rigid when I'm working with it this box is not used to being attached to a, a neck and having pressures on it so whatever I, I use I want to make sure that it's a little bit that it stabilizes the box it gets the paper where it needs to be but it's still a little bit flexible while I'm working on this thing ultimately when it's all done then I might go to spraying it with lacquer or, or varnish or something like that but right now I want to use a product that's going to dry clear and and uh, be durable enough and flexible enough for me to do the work I need to do yeah so what do I want to use to uh, stabilize this and get this paper where it needs to be so I can work on it you've known me to swear by this stuff but guys I got a tip from one of my viewers named Brett Banker I want to give you a shout out Brett Banker and he uh, made the comment on one of my I believe it was on the graphics video I'll give you a uh, I card to that right up there and you can see Brent Brett's Brett yeah not Brent Brett banker you can see his comment there but he swears by this stuff Earl Lube Industries paste now I went ahead and I ordered some it's not mouthwash even though it is minty fresh but I have never used this stuff before but I'm gonna go with Brett's um, advice and try this on this box because this stuff is it fits the criteria of this it's, uh, quite a bit cheaper in bulk so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, again stabilize the inside of the box with a phytosan and then put this on here I was pretty impressed when I ordered this stuff I got uh, basically a disclaimer that says hey we're a small business if something isn't right let us know right away and I appreciate that Bubba at EarlLubeIndustries.com shout out to you Bubba I'll send you a link to this I don't think y'all know this is happening but anyway we're gonna use this stuff this time and put it all over the box okay now we're on to Earl Lube Industries paste I have put a little bit in a measure glass measuring dish this is water cleanup just like Mod Podge the consistency is a little bit thicker than Mod Podge um, but we're just gonna paint it on the box like so and then when we've got pieces of paper sticking out we're just going to make sure that we dab straight down like so we're just going to go over the whole box like this yeah there we go it works it works pretty well I can get a little bit oh there's a big piece there coming off see that I'm just going to trace that down like that and then tap it down I hope you could see that 
But anyway, we're going to find some spots like that on the box and make sure that all of it's covered up, wherever that paper's cut and loose. I want to keep it as much as possible. So I'll get this box done and give you a look uh, what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, guys, let's catch up here quick. I have put um, this Earl Lube Industries paste on the box, and um, the whole purpose was, does it let everything still be flexible or does it make it hard and encourage the box to crack or whatever so i've taken a razor knife and i've cut the top of the box off um, i'm going to need to do that i want you to know that i gave the artist that this is going to a choice between um, this and on the inside and um, that's awesome i'm going to digitize that for future use but anyway he felt that this was the best and go with the theme so this will be the top now I'm about ready to have to cut the end here and I want you to notice that the thickness of the box here there's a lip or the lid there's a lip right there that's the same thickness as the top of the box so I'm not going to cut that here or it'll give me some weird thing going on so I'm actually going to come down the thickness of the lid down to let me grab a point here down to here and I'm going to do my cut out here again um, if you click on that eye it's going to show you how we built the last white owl box and it explains this in depth but now I'm going to want to tape this off and cut it so we don't splinter the edges and stuff and the whole test of this product was whether or not when you put painters tape on it is it going to pull up half of the label with it or not? So let's do that. I've also coated this here. So we're going to take this piece of painter's tape. Well, let's get a new one here off the roll and make sure that we see that it's clean. And I'm just going to go around this box and push down. See, it comes up clean as a whistle. So this stuff has served its purpose now it says in the instructions i can come over this later when i get this box done and put uh lacquer over whatever i want to do but it has served its purpose so thumbs up on that one okay so i have already cut um or notched the neck here so it will receive the top of the box um it's just a tad below um uh, where the fretboard will um, mount so I'll have plenty of room for my floating bridge right in this area here and then these will come up and go over that floating bridge so um, what I've got to do now is figure out that's the thickness of the pocket so let me make sure you can see here can you see no there you go I'm just going to take this I'm going to set it there like so and just slide it down and that right there is how deep my pocket will need to be right here on the box. You see, I've got it marked out already. So I just come down from that mark right there. Remember, I'm going to leave that piece up there and come down and it will be about right there. So I'll tape that off. Before I get to working on the outside of the box too much, I want to reinforce the the uh, inside and I'm going to do that by caulking the inside I'm going to run around the edges now this is a handy handy tool because once you've got the caulking in the box you spread it fairly thin and then you just take this gadget and run down the corner and it fits inside of the box really well and does that now I've taken and numbered off the corners of the boxes of the box and I've cut ones that will fit there now you notice that three is matches three um, if the box is tilted a little bit or something i need that to sit right even with where the box is going to sit the top of the box so when i put my corners on i can screw down and have something to screw into it matters whether it's the front of the box or the back the front box to accept 
everything is going to be like this. I've got to figure out that on the top up here in this corner, I'm going to end up my volume controls are going to be over here on the top of the box. But I've cut each one of these individually and then marked the corners where they're going to go because there is a little bit of variance. So I'm going to caulk these in, glue those in, and then I'm going to start thinking about using some of this kind of wood at the right thickness to come in between these and beef that up. All right, there we go. All the pillar blocks are put in. This is the front of the guitar, um, and this is the back. Notice they're turned different ways. I have to be able to get um, the jack will go through here. There's going to be two uh, pin end jacks going through here, so I want that to drill. It'll come through about here, and then all my electronics will be over here. Again, I think I'm going to put the volume controls up here but we're going to wait for this to dry up and while that's happening i want to be cutting and measuring the parts that fit down in the side to beef this up and i'll glue those on and then give that one more set of caulk around the sides and we'll be good to go all right guys i've got everything together i'm uh, dry fitting this right now i've cut some end pieces like this to glue in they fit down between the pillar blocks and they're going to reinforce this thin part of the box here and if I slide this in you can see I'm just dry fitting this everything comes together nice and uh, there we go the label looks great all I've got to do now is take this razor knife and just kind of run along the edge like this at the edge of the pocket there we go and I'm going to glue all this up now Again, this is just a piece of a box measured and cut out. I'm going to glue this in and then this thing will be about ready. Hey guys, sorry about the bad lighting, but it's late at night. I'm going into the holiday weekend and I wanted to wrap this up. I want to tell you, hey, this Earl Lube paste uh, stuff worked out great. It's not shiny. The, the paper is stabilized. Uh, the wood gives a little bit. It, it's flexible. I really like this product. So shout out to Earl Lube Industries Paint. Um, great job there. I'm going to send Bubba over there at EarlLubeIndustries.com uh, uh, a compliment there. Now you're going to see this guitar showing up in the future uh, on a, a future episode. And I'm going to put, somebody sent me this pickup and i'm going to be talking about that because it's a really flat mount pickup i hope you can see that we'll talk about that and then when the artist gets in i'm sure we haven't seen the last of this box now um what else is there oh yeah i want to share a secret with you guys something you probably don't know you know what these are right right and I'll bet you every one of us has eaten hundreds of pounds of these things in our lifetime. Maybe not the peanut ones. Some of you have peanut allergies, but I guarantee you, you've eaten these and you probably love them. But do you see that? Do you know what that stands for? Has anyone ever explained that to you? Yeah, it stands for millimeters. Millimeters. There you go, Metricator. Give me a thumbs down. The rest of you, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like, subscribe to my channel, click the notify button, and you'll get a ringer every time I release one of my super exciting videos. So, I will see you next time.